she's the only cruise ship icebreaker in the world. She runs on liquefied natural gas and battery power and has more features than a top-end Swiss Army knife. Welcome to Ponant's futuristic ultra-luxury polar sensation. We think she's the most capable, technically advanced and luxurious ship in the world and we're going to show you around to prove our claims. Welcome to Le Commandant Charcot. There are very few ships in the world you can cruise on that you can genuinely call unique. A couple that spring to mind include Cunard's magnificent Queen Mary II, the world's biggest and only operating ocean liner, and the Aranui 5, the part container ship, part cruise ship that carries guests and cargo around the islands of French Polynesia. It is Le Commandant Charcot, however, that really captures our imagination. Be prepared to be amazed. Let's go inside. We start this tour on Deck 3, the lowest guest accessible deck and the two expedition rooms. Most other expedition ships have a mudroom where passengers embark from the Zodiacs and change out of their all-weather gear and muddy boots, hence the name mudroom. On Charcot, the designers insisted that as the first area the guests see when they board, it should be as luxurious as any other public area. I must say, I've never seen a mudroom as comfy as this. We'll go up to deck 5 now and the main reception area where you'll see on your left Studio Ponon, the Photoshop, before finding the reception desk and a seating area. The opposite side of the reception area is the expeditions desk. The panels behind the seating are constantly changing and are never the same, uh, but more about that next. There are lots of little details dotted around the ship, like these wireless charging points cleverly built into the side tables. Also here you will find a rather unique atrium, which features two glass elevators and windows into the suite corridors. The atrium is flooded with natural light as it rises the whole height of the ship. The most interesting feature is, however, the giant 3 meter by 9 meters high LED screen entitled Oscillations. This art installation by digital pioneer Miguel Chevalier cleverly uses acoustic underwater recordings of the area you are sailing in and converts these sound waves to visual imagery, and it constantly changes, and no two moments are ever the same. Whoever thinks of these things, eh? Hmm. Miguel Chevalier did, obviously. Facing the expedition's desk is the shop. Many of the public areas on board Sharko have names in the Inuit language to honour the indigenous people inhabiting the Arctic and subarctic regions of Greenland, Labrador, Quebec, Nunavut and the Northwest Territories and Alaska, with which Ponant has a close, friendly and cooperative relationship with. In fact, they love this ship and often whole villages will be invited on board when visiting their homelands. Towards the front of the ship we reach the main lounge, which for some reason doesn't seem to have an Inuit name. This beautiful space benefits from a bar and spans the entire width of the ship. It's broken up into these lovely seating areas for evening drinks and all day relaxing. With the bar on the starboard side is a small stage where the resident musicians play softly in the background. And in the middle is this elegant feature fireplace that crackles and fizzes just like a real fire. This open area is also used for afternoon tea and other pre-dinner gastronomic surprises. On the port side, there's more areas to relax and watch the polar landscape drift silently by. The spaces on board Le Commandant Charcot were designed by internationally renowned architects Jean-Philippe Nuel and Jean-Michel Wilmot using ornaments and materials that resonate with the polar environment. There's a lot of art to admire here. OK, let's move on. Also on the port side is the Cigar Lounge, offering a selection of fine cigars and very expensive cognacs. Right at the front of the ship on deck 5 is the Theatre Kita, which can comfortably accommodate the 245 guests on board, which is restricted to 200 in Antarctica, where they will hear port talks and those all-important expedition briefings, which are held here. Let's go right back to the aft of the ship and you'll see these two little windows where you can peer in wonder at those culinary geniuses at work before you reach the main restaurant, Nuna. 
foodies will rejoice as this is the first ever Alain Ducasse restaurant at sea. The Ducasse Conciel has collaborated with Ponant since 2016, but the Charcot takes the partnership to new levels, featuring menus created by Ducasse himself and featuring signature dishes served at his restaurants. It takes French fine dining to a higher level than ever before, and the setting is pretty incredible too. The restaurant is the epitome of modern French sophistication. Let's go back to reception now, and these doors lead to the promenade deck. It's no secret that we love a full wraparound promenade deck, so of course it follows that our new favourite ship has one. <laughs> Formidable! This one though takes the humble promenade deck and gives it not one or two, but five surprises. Surprise one. The whole deck is heated. Yes, the floor is heated so it stays snow free. How? Well, using energy recovery technology from the expelled engine heat, so it's incredibly efficient and costs virtually nothing. That's genius. Surprise two, these benches look a little bit bony to sit on until you realize that they are made of hot pipes. You literally will not be able to tear yourself away from their warming clutches. Surprise three, around the deck are these two powerful spotting scopes which incorporate high quality Swarovski optics. But that's not surprise three. A stroll to the aft of the ship not only gives you these stunning weight views as a pair of the world's most powerful Azipod propeller units slice through the icy sea, but turn around and you'll see a second bridge. Yeah, that's right. This ship has two bridges. This means that you can drive this ship backwards. In sea ice, the Azipods spin around and the whole ship becomes a sort of front wheel drive and the bridge crew can happily sail this way for as long as needed. The azipods are so strong, they act as icebreakers, effectively obliterating anything that gets in the way. Go on, tell me you're not impressed. But that's not all this deck reveals. Surprise 4 is at the front of the ship. The full wraparound deck gives you right to the front of the bow, where you can peer over and watch the muscular PC2 rated hull, the only purpose-built cruise ship in the world with such a rating, break ice up to 2.5 metres thick. Now that's something I'd love to see. The final surprise is up these fairly innocuous stairs we passed earlier. Yes, Le Commandant Charcot has a heliport on the bow of the ship. It's absolutely huge and below this deck is a helicopter that's not used for guest rides but for the expedition crew to fly over the ice flows in front of the ship to determine where it is safe to take the ship. This is truly unique and really hits home to you as a guest that she is no ordinary expedition ship. She's an ice-breaking titan. Earth does this ship tour follow that? Well, for a start, I could go into detail about the accommodation on board. The guest quarters are nothing short of breathtaking, but this is only a sneak peek. I'll need to show you these in another video, so keep a lookout for that one, as it's definitely worth a watch. Instead, we'll go up to deck 9 and start at the aft. Firstly, I have to apologise. The Blue Lagoon here is stunning, but our time on board was plagued with rough seas and lots of rain, so my footage isn't to the standard I'd like. And you're not seeing the Blue Lagoon in all its glory. However, I hope this is giving you a taste of what's intended to be, which is a beautiful outdoor space designed to be at one with the polar landscapes. There's a bar, a buffet-style outdoor kitchen area and this handsome fire pit which is, when you get close enough, has hot water circulating constantly in the surround. And you guessed it, it's warm to touch and great to sit on. The twin rear wraparound pools, one hot and one cold, were full and steaming at the start of the voyage, but had to be emptied because of the angry sea we sailed through on the first night. All the heating here at the Blue Lagoon is recovered heat like the promenade decks, meaning you can warm your derriere guilt-free. 
This is one of the most environmentally friendly ships in the world, but we'll cover more of that in a later video at another time. There's literally too much to fit in here. Moving inside, we have Restaurant Sila, the buffet-style area that serves the same quality food as Restaurant Nuna, but in a more relaxed setting. The area is split into two by the serving area in the middle. It's also the first restaurant I've seen with charging sockets by the tables. What a thoughtful and useful detail. Opposite the restaurant on Deck 9 is the Nuan Spa, incorporating the Sika Snow Room and the Ikuna Sauna. We could spend all day in these delicious hanging chairs. The main attraction is the indoor pool Imac in the Winter Garden, where you can contemplate the polar landscapes from your cushioned daybed while sipping on a healthy tipple from the detox bar. If you fancy stretching those relaxed muscles, the fitness center isn't far away. It's a generous size area given the size and capacity of the ship, but suffers from that age-old ponant gripe of mine. Not a single free weight in sight. Ah oh, well, how many bicep curl reps can you do with a fully grown penguin? <laughs> Relax, I'm kidding. Bench press a polar bear? Okay, I've made my point. At the front of Deck 9 is one of the highlights of the whole ship, the stunning Anori Observation Lounge. It's the focal point for pre- and post-dinner drinks, canapes, light musical entertainment, and, well, it's just so relaxing too. There's an information screen in here that gives you a magnitude of meteorological info about your current position. They are dotted around the ship, so you'll always stay informed. Venture through these doors located on the sides of the lounge, and you'll discover an excellent observation deck in front of those panoramic windows. The views up here are unparalleled, as is this ship itself. It simply has no parallel, no peer, no equal. Yes, I might be gushing a bit, but that's how she made me feel. She's my new favourite ship, and that's before I've even seen her in action. She's simply a masterpiece of design, engineering, comfort, luxury and cuisine. Ponant have built the ultimate expedition vessel. If you enjoyed this, here's some more Ponant content we know you'll enjoy too. Merci beaucoup.